grew up in Malibu. I'm one of five kids, one of the, the longtime families here. We moved to the property when I was five. This was my family home. My parents had just gifted the property to us the April before the fire. So for 20 years, we kind of managed it and took care of everything. And then the fire came and burned everything down. This shit just got super real. We were here when the fire happened. We grabbed what we could, right? We had 20 minutes. We jumped in the cars and we left. Growing up here, I'd lived through a bunch of fires. So I wanted to get the kids. I didn't want them to see what I saw because this exact fire in my mind happened when I was seven. There wasn't a lot of insurance money. We didn't know how or what we we're gonna be able to rebuild. And we had been researching any kind of alternative thing you could because building traditionally is very, very expensive, especially in Malibu, because the labor is very, very high, especially if you're competing with all the other people building. And wood is expensive and it burns. And so, you know, what do you do? So when we were looking for anything with this idea of non-flammable building materials, It's aluminum. So all of these details, these, all of these columns and the awnings, this is all aluminum. It will patina a little more, right? It'll get a more kind of a white patina mm -hmm. and it has kind of a fun sound. <laughs> well, you know, it's not wood. So you have to be like, well, that's weird. This house is actually built. It's an aluminum frame, right? That's trussed like when you see a stage. So the, the skeleton of this house isn't wood, it's, it's aluminum truss. And then they have these steel panels that are steel, insulation, steel. So you all the time that it would take to put up first the infrastructure of the wall and then the insulation and then the outside and then the inside, all that labor is gone. You just have these panels that click on, boom, 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 boom. And so in days, instead of many months, you have a, the whole framework of your house done anything to kind of reduce the labor cost, because the labor cost is what makes it astronomically expensive. We try to transcend kind of like some of the biggest limitations of prefabrication, which is transportation, right? You can only make a unit as big as you can transport it. Every component of the home has been designed to fit through a 30 inch door. So that sort of like simple width allows us total accessibility into simple and complex sites. The other important point from the logistical side and the implementation side is just like that we use no cranes. We just use lightweight equipment, but the maximum we use a forklift. In most cases, we use a hand crank material lift. Right, like that's another one of the big sort of like hurdles in prefabrication. It's just like the incredibly expensive and complicated process of creating a home. We simplify that by creating kind of lightweight structural components that can be assembled on site with minimal equipment and a team of people. We didn't invent space framing. We only brought it to home building. Space framing is usually used for large structures. So if you've ever been to an airport, most likely the roof consists of a space frame. It's a most efficient way of covering the most amount of space with the least amount of the material. So we've been in, prior to doing housing, we did like about like seven years of large scale events. When we started as a company, nobody needed a house that was cheap and it was fast. But event companies needed big, large expressions that would bring people together. We've been working with Coachella for like over 10 years now. Two years ago, we started migrating that technology to housing. So we said, okay, can we apply that technology to housing? Space frame technology, are amazing, right? They were invented a hundred years ago. It allows us to theoretically do like large spans, free form, and tackle the most amount of space with the least amount of material. 
However, it's incredibly difficult to manufacture. What we devoted our company to is sort of like really improving all of the manufacturing technology around space framing. And through that, we started discovering its amazing application to housing. The basic difference between a space frame and a traditional truss, a traditional truss uses mass to carry the weight and transfer the loads. A space frame literally uses geometry a series of struts that bring either tension or compression back to the loads. So that's why it's just an incredibly sort of like lightweight solution that is as or more resilient than a concrete beam or a steel beam that is about like 15 times the weight or a traditional wood beam. As well. And then you can optimize, you can optimize the geometry, you can sort of short circuit, and you can also sort of design and calculate appropriately for the low cases that you're studying. You know, whether it's earthquakes or category five wind resistance, those kind of factors, depending on the geography that we're working, we kind of condition the engineering accordingly. We have a total of a hundred components that they can kind of pre-manufacture and assemble on site. So at the bottom, you can see the ground truss that gets anchored to the ground kind of with helical screws. You can see the space ring kind of behind the panels. We are like 36 enclosure panels that allows us to kind of transcend Title 24 thermal regulation. So we are like almost double the amount of insulation that is actually required. The unit width is like, in this case, is like 22 feet wide. So that allows for multiple circulations. It allows for like a better space layout and things that we wouldn't be able to accomplish if we would need to put our unit on a, on a track. So that opens a whole series of possibilities. So that space room allows you to kind of to create a whole raised foundation. It allows you to kind of erect up to 10 feet high and it allows you to span up to 40 feet in between supports. That alone makes for a great space. I love this little, you know, it's just, there's a little bit of sheen to the materials. Uh, there's something kind of particularly beautiful about this side as it changes through in the day and every sort of like surface, you know, we like kind of working with dull materials and shiny materials in such a way that we can always pay attention to shadow lines, pay attention to little reflections and build that in into this little thin strip, which is kind of like an entry porch. I think one of the most important things about this one bedroom, one bathroom design was to unify the whole house with this bolting ceiling that joins, goes like runs east to west and it joins the living room, the dining room and the bedroom all into one space while maintaining all the privacy necessary in between the rooms. So the truss would be all around, is it all four? Yeah. Truss can so on the inside, now you can see the truss, right? Like the space frame has a formal impact on kind of what the house is about. So you see sort of like the free span that is like 40 feet. You see the five foot tall truss, sort of the bolted ceiling. So the whole home is sort of like sculpted. It's sculpted from the inside out. And that sort of, we use the space frame as a way to kind of like sculpt a home that otherwise wouldn't have the same kind of qualities. So it's essentially one big space and it could have been cut up, right? All the interior walls are, are added after the fact. So you could have cut it up any way you wanted. So it's got a central bay. It has all your utilities in it. So kitchen on one side, bathroom on the other side, right? So you have one wet wall, one place all the plumbing comes in. It simplifies things and makes things a lot cheaper and easier to do. And then you, you kind of walk around it. So you have kind of the living room to the kitchen. This is the bedroom. None of the interior walls are low bearing. So that allows us incredible flexibility from the point of space layout. That allows you kind of for like a much, you know, more open space, if you will. But also space as a spatial dimension, that allows us to maintain all of the walls low at an eight foot datum and create a nook for the kitchen. So rather than starting to think about the kitchen as a series of countertops, we thought about the kitchen as a space. Something that I can contain 
almost any element that you want to put in there. And it looks like you have a couch up there. So Alexis knows I love nooks. Like, so what he built was kind of a storage space up above the bathroom. And then I was like, well, what if, what if the kids could play up there? And he's like, all right, you can put in a ladder. And we'll That's an extra 160 square feet that doubles up as a playroom, as a private room, as a reading room, a space away from the parents for a second. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna go upstairs. <laughs> So if you come back, this is the, uh, the closet. I really begged for a big closet. Oh, wow. So this is also still open. Because this is just, the house was one big shell. Well, yeah, exactly. First they put up the shell and then they bring in the interior walls. So yeah. the, the structure in the, all four corners, there's, a, there's truss that is, are your beams. It's part of what holds your structure together. So, but you can span with this kind of truss. 40 feet or something, way more than regular construction where you have to have beams and cross beams more often. With this stuff, you can make these big spaces that are open. That's the other idea of his roof, that you can do a space this big without anything going up and it's structurally sound. Keeps going. Yeah, and then Alexis loves to be able to see through. Yeah. And yeah, so here's the bathroom. We get, you know, we had to like, keep things small enough that we could all fit in. So we had to get our laundry in here, we had to get a shower in here, and, but it actually, the space works great. Nothing feels too small. Every, every little space is relevant, and we try to make it relevant, right? Like, so here we are, like a bathroom that is literally twice the size of a traditional bathroom. Because a bathroom is a place where we're gonna be doing laundry, taking a shower. We can see sort of like the continuity between living room, bathroom, dressing room. We're never in a confined room. We try to kind of establish a circulation path in such a way that all of the parts are connected together. And as far as like the white core and all of the systems of the house, we kind of like try to centralize the distribution of the elements. And one of the biggest advantages is having a hollow truss, basically kind of like an open channel through which you can very easily route your electrical, route your hot water and your cold water, and then drop it where it's needed. So you can see kind of that all of the lighting of the house and all of the systems are to the side. We have like a hollow truss that allows us to kind of run all of the electrical, thermostats, fire detectors, and AC within one continuous element. So we can kind of prefabricate all of the elements, include all of the MEP in it, and ship ready to assemble. Lightweight timber was the cutting edge technology 120 years ago. Balloon framing, it was the most incredible way of kind of building quickly this country. I mean, if you think about it, within 100 years, we have been able to house 330 million people. And I think that, that technology made that happen. Now, that technology has become stagnant. It has become outdated. But it's also deeply ingrained in the way we construct things. And it's not necessarily a shortcoming. But I think it's important that we open other ways of doing things. For us, we see it as we've been training people for the last 10 years, where within two days, they can learn, understand our system and implement it. So we're talking about kind of like cutting the training time from months of years into within a week, you're able to understand and implement kind of the components that we're working on. The global housing crisis, the crisis in affordability across the world and across the country has incredibly severe consequences. We need to resolve how we implement and how fast we implement housing. What we do allows us to create a home in 30 days as opposed to in nine months. So accelerating our output is crucial to creating accessible products for homeowners.